So you've got this great idea. You want to run a three on three basketball league, or maybe you're already running a three on three basketball league and you just want to do it better. So what do you do? You head on over to the internet, you Google how to run a three on three basketball league and click nothing, nada, nothing's there. Well, you've come to the right place because I'm going to tell you how to do it. Yeah. Enjoy the show. Step one, find the perfect facility. An ideal facility will have one gym with at least six half court baskets. Even better if you have one gym that has eight to 12 half court baskets. If you have a facility with more than one gym space, maybe one is down the hall, that's not ideal, but it's not a deal breaker. With a little bit of extra planning and extra staffing, you can make that work. Those baskets need three point lines, free throw lines, and out of bounds lines. Now, if they don't have lines, can you tape lines on the floor? Yes, you can, but that's not ideal. And we're talking about the ideal facility. You will also need access to spectator seating, a score clock, tables, bathrooms, and ice in case of injuries. Maybe the most important thing about your facility is music. A kick butt music system will make your three on three league an awesome event. Step two, pick your dates. When is a good time to run your league? Avoid running your league during the main basketball season in your area. When kids are already playing high school or traveling basketball, they've got practices, they've got tournaments, they're too busy to play in your three on three league. As soon as those seasons conclude, that's a great time to run your three on three league or leading up to the tryouts to their five on five teams. That's another great time. How many weeks should you run your league? The magic number is four. Unless you've got a lot of teams, then maybe you can run five. Step three, supply your teams with t-shirts. Every player in your league should receive a t-shirt. Each team should have a different color t-shirt than any other teams they might be playing. It's a really good idea to ask in the registration form what the team's preferences are for colors. We have them list three. Step four, create a website for your league. There needs to be a place online for people to find your league. Best thing is if you could make your league have its own website or leagues if you're running more than one. If that's not possible right now, then see if you can get yourself a page on another organization's website, maybe the high school team's website, a traveling association's website. Maybe you own a facility and you run other programs in that facility. You can give yourself a page for your three on three league. It's a bug. Um, the bottom line is you need a place on the internet where people can come and find out information about your league. Step five, create an online registration. I'm going to give you a big tip here. Do not have an online registration that accepts individual players that you are going to place on teams. Just trust me, don't go down that path. It's a big headache. So make a registration that is just for a team. Now you can include whatever information you want on your online registration, but here are some things that you are going to definitely want to have. You're going to want to have primary contact information, a team name, the division that the team wants to play in. You will want the names of the players as well as their shirt sizes and their email addresses. Offer the team the opportunity to tell you a couple of shirt color preferences that they would like. And if possible, Ask them if they have any schedule requests or schedule needs. That does make scheduling a lot more difficult, but it is worth it. Step six, promote your league. Oh my goodness, promote, promote, promote. You cannot over promote. Let me repeat that. You cannot over promote. Send out email blasts again and again and again. Use your personal social media accounts and make posts about your league and ask other organizations if they would be willing to post about your league and then have people share those posts. Make flyers, post them in the gyms, uh, hand them out at camps, hand them out at tournaments. Make yard signs. Yard signs, you can put them out in the community, um, maybe 30 miles out from you, but just 
a warning, be careful. You can't just put yard signs anywhere. There are ordinances and rules in some communities. So just make sure you check that out before you plaster them around town. Pick up your phone and call people. Place an ad in your high school team's basketball program. Put an ad in the newspaper if you're in a small town. The bottom line is people need to hear about your league more than one time. Keep it in front of them. You cannot over promote. Go get them. Step seven, staff your league. Find some people to work your league. This is a really important step. Do not take this step lightly. Find people who are fun and energetic and positive and just, they're gonna make your experience for your participants great. Don't overlook this step. You do not want lazy, boring, blah, people working your event. Who can you ask to ref? Well, you could start by networking with certified officials. You could also ask your friends and acquaintances who love basketball. I'm sure they'd love to be a part of it. And another idea is to ask your high school boys and girls varsity program to see if any of those players would like to ref. Step eight, train your staff. Do not hand your staff a whistle and a clipboard and send them off to the court. Do not assume that they know the rules and the philosophy of your league. You could hold a training event where you invite teams in to play three on three and let your refs practice. You could create a training video that your staff members could watch. But at the very least, please have a meeting with your refs before your league starts. Go over the rules that you have put in place. Also have them practice blowing their whistle loudly, practice their signals, and make sure that they understand the philosophy that you have set up for your league. These are the people that are going out into the, the courts to create this magical experience, this wonderful experience for your participants, and it's really important that they're prepared to do a great job. Oh, and do make sure that you make your expectations very clear about what you want from them in terms of their energy level and their enthusiasm. Step nine, schedule your league. Are you going to run your games for a certain amount of time or are you going to have the games go until a team hits a certain score? I'm not going to go into our reasons why right now, but we run our games for 20 minutes running time. How many games will each team get per week? In our leagues, teams will play two games per date. Are you going to accept schedule requests? I highly recommend you do. It certainly does increase the difficulty of your scheduling task, but it will increase the number of teams that can play in your league. I mean, who does that? Who asks for schedule requests? So you will reap the rewards of having more teams in your league if you are willing to go the extra mile and accept requests. How will you communicate your schedule? Obviously, you're going to want to post it on your website but many teams have the same team name or similar team names. So we assign each team a unique ID number. We post the list of teams with their team names, but then also their ID number. And then when they look at the schedule, they're looking at for their, their team ID number. It's a much shorter thing to fit on the schedule. Step 10, run your league. You can't be overprepared for your league. Start thinking now, start shopping, get your stuff packed up so that you will have office supplies like your pens and your um, stapler and a highlighter, those kinds of things. You're also going to need staff shirts for your refs, whistles and clipboards with score sheets for your refs. And then you'll need a ball pump, you'll need first aid supplies um, and maybe some basketballs in case kids don't bring basketballs. Be an active and engaged site director. Stay visible to the parents and the players in case they need you. Watch all the games, see what's going on, and you might have to jump in and do some refing if a ref has a particularly difficult, challenging game, they need a little bit of help. If you're doing a great job managing your league, you will be exhausted at the end of the night. Well, there you go, 10 important steps for running your own three-on-three -three basketball league. There are many variations to how you could run your league, and I'm not here to tell you that this is the only way to do it. I'm Christy Hilly, and my husband and I have been running three-on-three -three leagues 
for over 20 years. We've run nearly 300 of them now. And we've tried some different things. We've made some mistakes along the way. We have gotten feedback from our nearly 100,000 participants that we've had in our leagues. And we think that we've got a pretty good model going right now. And I just wanna share it with you. We're very passionate about helping others do what we're doing. And so I have created this channel and I am looking forward to hearing your comments and your questions. Please hit the like button if I was helpful in any way. If you wanna see more, subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm gonna be busy creating some more videos to answer your questions and help you guys run three on three leagues. It's a great platform for kids for playing basketball and together we're gonna to grow this game. Thanks for watching. Oh, hey. Also, there should be a link down there if you want to get my free guide. There's some more details to some of these steps that I went over kind of quickly. Go ahead and download that um, guide and you'll have more information than what I just gave you. Okay, thanks. Bye.